If you wanna bowl faster or hit the ball further, then building muscle is essential. In this video today, I'm gonna to take you through why does muscle actually help cricket performance? What are the three main mechanisms for muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth? And how much of a role does nutrition play in building muscle? My name's Sam, and when I was younger, I was one of the smaller kids. And this led to me turning to strength conditioning to help me hit it as far as the bigger kids. And now I run CrickFit with a goal of educating club cricketers about how they can use strength conditioning to help improve their game. So if that's something you'd be interested in, hit subscribe and then let's get into this video. Right, so let's first off understand why muscle actually helps your cricketing performance. Very simply, more muscle gives you more force in your tank. I'm gonna change from this red pen because it's not very good. Over to blue we go. And why it gives us more force in our tank is because muscle fibers, especially the fast twitch ones, I will actually generate movement when we play. So between joints, we have muscles, and inside muscles, we have loads and loads and loads of muscle fibers. Now, hopefully I can find a good video to drop over the top of this so you don't have to watch my artwork for this bit. But inside each muscle fiber, there are tiny proteins called actin and myosin. Now, essentially, when your brain sends a signal to the muscle to ask it to contract, actin and myosin slide past each other. And they form something called cross bridges where they interconnect, that worked better in my head, where they interconnect, and these cross bridges then allow you to generate movement. This is a very, very bad analogy. Make sure you watch the video instead. But essentially, the more of these cross bridges we can form, the more force this muscle can produce. So when we train for muscle hypertrophy, or muscle growth, we're increasing the number and the size of these contractile units, which over time means your muscle has a greater capacity to produce more force. So when you build muscle, you're literally increasing the machinery that helps you to bowl faster and swing harder. And if you can generate more force, then you'll be able to generate more speed when you bat and bowl, as long as you have a high RFD or rate of force development, which if you haven't heard us speak about this before, we'll definitely cover this in detail in a future video. But for the purpose of this one, more muscle allows more force, which allows more speed. And now the obvious question, which a lot of people then ask is, can you have too much muscle for cricket? And the answer is probably yeah. But then the brutal answer is, are you likely to get to that point? And honestly, the answer is no. Unless you're training and eating like a bodybuilder, which if you're following this page, you're probably not. Don't just magically become a bodybuilder overnight. Those guys and girls work very hard to look how they do. Your level of muscular strength is more likely to be a limiting factor to your performance than an inhibitor. Cool, so now we know why building muscle is important. Next, let's think about how we actually build that. Once again, I'm gonna get out my whiteboard and very average art skills. I could have also done with something that actually rubs this off. Note to self for future videos. Now, there are three main mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy. Essentially, three ways your body gets a signal to grow. Number one is mechanical tension. And this is the big one. Every time you lift a weight or apply force against resistance, your muscle fibers experience tension. And the heavier the load, the more force you have to produce. Therefore, the greater the mechanical tension inside that muscle fiber. This tension creates a signal for your body to adapt by reinforcing those fibers, essentially making them thicker so they can handle more stress next time. Now to demonstrate this, imagine this is one joint, this is another joint. The ease of it, let's say this is our knees, and this is our hips. Now imagine this is a muscle fiber. If I apply a force to this, it's gonna to struggle to handle it. So what my body is gonna to have to do is it's gonna to have to make this muscle stronger over time to be able to handle more and more force. And as it can handle more and more force, I can apply more force to that muscle, which is gonna mean over time, the muscle keeps getting stronger. And because it gets stronger and stronger, we can start to apply more and more force to the muscle to make it nice and strong in there. This could go badly. <laughs> nice. Where people often go wrong with their strength training is this is actually probably a fairly good representation of a muscle fiber. Where you've got some really strong bits, but you've got some pretty weak bits as well. So whilst this is set up, this is also incredibly satisfying. So whilst this is set up, I want you to keep in mind this for the rest of the video is this resistance band ASMR. So my point with this that has just come into my mind is the issue of a lot of people training in the gym is they don't really push hard enough. And if you push, don't push hard enough, then really, let's say I'm just pushing like that. If I push down on the same amount, your brain is only gonna use the strongest muscle fibers first. So it's gonna be the green one. Now, what we want to do is we want to push to failure. 
And when we push to failure, what we're effectively doing, we're saying to the strongest muscle fiber, you, we're exhausting you, so next set, you can't do as much work. That then means in the next set, yes, this muscle fiber might do a little bit of work after we've had some rest, but let's say it can only manage three reps, and then this one is tapped out. We're then having to rely on the other fibers to do the work for the next reps, taking away the strongest ones as they get tired as we do more and more volume, which then actually means these weaker muscle fibers are having to do more work. And as they're doing more work, they're then, we're then creating more mechanical tension, creating more muscle damage, which over time, once it recovers, means these fibers get stronger as well as the strong ones. I hope that makes sense. I think that was a little bit waffly, but you should get the idea of that. So before I got sidetracked playing around with some bands, we were talking about mechanical tension. And just to finish off that section, first of all, how do we train mechanical tension? So rep wise, you're probably gonna be looking at four to eight reps per set. And you're gonna be loading that with 75 to 90% of your one rep max. I want you to really think about your tempo, having really good control and form through the movement. So what I mean about that with tempo is rather than doing loads of really quick reps, we're gonna have a large time under tension, really controlling it and really squeezing at the end point and controlling it through the middle points of the range of motion. Your rest will likely be between 90 seconds to three minutes, and you'll be doing between three to five sets on each exercise. Ta-da! And you'll know you're targeting mechanical tension well if what I was just demonstrating in the bands, where you're fatiguing through the set starts happening. That shows that we're applying enough mechanical tension to the muscle fibers in order for them to have to recover and grow. And that's why strength training is so important for cricketers, because it allows us to progressively overload the muscle fibers so they can adapt, get stronger, and ultimately give you more power on the field. Cool, so that's mechanical tension. Now let's move on to number two, which is muscle damage. Now, when you train hard, and especially with eccentric work, and what we mean by eccentric work is the muscle lengthening, such as that phase of a bicep curl, or the lowering phase of a squat or a lunge, you're essentially creating micro tears in the muscle fiber. Your body then repairs these fibers through a process called muscle protein synthesis, where proteins are built to come in and reinforce damaged muscle. And over time, that is essentially what I was saying here, where we're creating muscle damage and the proteins will come in and reinforce the damaged area. And this is where the waffly bit where I was playing around with the bands means there's a little bit of crossover between mechanical tension and muscle damage because mechanical tension will create muscle damage. And if you're training to create muscle damage, you'll also be having mechanical tension. But you could also have mechanical tension without creating loads of muscle damage. So there is crossover and a few gray areas, but it's important to just understand the process. Now, to really focus on creating muscle damage, we want to first of all look at eccentric movements and really focusing on the eccentric phase, where you may be lowering the weight for three to four seconds. The loads might be a little bit more moderate, so closer to 60 to 75% of your 1RM, and your reps are then probably going to be a little bit higher, maybe eight to 12 reps to really focus on this. Your sets might then be a little bit lower, so two to four sets. And from this kind of training, you'll likely experience something called DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. If I do a graphic of this, delayed onset muscle soreness. That could be really satisfying or look really bad. And this is essentially where a day or two after doing a session is when you actually get the soreness from that session. So if you do slow eccentrics and you're not sore during the session, don't speak too soon and wait a few days. Now, I'll come on to this more at the end. And I understand I'm con that's a bit annoying. I need my circles to be the same. And I understand I'm contradicting myself a little bit here, but what's really important about these three mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy is that you just understand the principle of how a muscle gets bigger and stronger. You don't have to go into a gym and go, right, today I'm gonna to focus fully on creating muscle damage. All of that should be taken care of in your training you're doing anyway. This is the process of how development happens. It's not the goal you're looking to achieve. But also, if you're not aware of all of this and you're missing out a key element, whether it's one, two, or three, three we're about to cover, and you're not making progress and you're not getting stronger, I imagine one of these areas you're probably not doing. Maybe even two, maybe even three. So let's move on to the third area, which is something called metabolic stress. And this is basically where you feel the burn 
in a muscle when you're doing an exercise. And you might feel this when you're doing higher reps or you're keeping muscle under tension for a longer period of time. Now, as you're training, you're getting byproducts such as lactate or hydrogen ions start to build up inside the muscle. This causes what's known as cell swelling, which increases the pressure inside the muscle fiber and signals to your brain that this muscle needs to adapt. In response, this will increase muscle protein synthesis again and other growth related processes in order to make that muscle more resilient for next time. So in this situation, your weights may be lighter, but training with a focus on metabolic stress can still lead to building muscle. So for this, your loads might be 50 to 60% of your 1RM, sorry, 50 to 70%. The reps will be higher, so they'll maybe be 12 to 20 in some cases, and your rest is probably gonna be a little bit shorter to 30 to 60 seconds to really allow all of those metabolites to build up. And from this, you'll get a really good pump on and a good burn in your muscle, and that's how you know you'll be hitting metabolic stress. Now, my issue with metabolic stress is that's what most of you want to feel in your training. And often when we have new guys start on the app, they think during the session, it's too easy because we're probably operating further down this area. And then a few days later, they'll then get sore. Now I can't stress this more. You don't need every single exercise to feel a burn through metabolic stress. There are three mechanisms from which you can build muscle. And our goal is to give you a mixture of all of them. You need to lift heavy enough to create enough mechanical tension. You need to control the movement and have good tempo in order to create muscle damage. And occasionally, sure, we can chase that burn to stimulate metabolic stress. That combination is what drives serious muscle growth over a prolonged period of time. And is also why training phases are so important because you're not just focusing on one process for a six month period. It's a combination and you're building the full package. Now, finally, we can't make this video without covering nutrition. Is nutrition important to help you build muscle? No, it is absolutely essential. And no, we're not talking about salads and smoothies. We are talking about protein. Now, a phrase that kept coming up in the previous section was muscle protein synthesis. And your body needs protein because it needs the amino acids inside protein to repair and build muscle fibers. So think of it like this. The training is the signal, but the protein is the material that comes in to actually help that muscle growth happen. And without that, you're just breaking down muscle fiber. So importantly, how much protein do you need? And most people, especially active athletes, normally are very under their protein targets. So as a ballpark figure, you want 1.5 to 2 grams per kilo of your body weight per day of protein. So to keep this really simple mass wise, if you weigh 100 kilograms, you need 150 to 200 grams of protein every single day. Not just weekdays, every day. Not just when you're training, every day. Hit that consistently over a large period of time alongside training where you're hitting the free mechanisms and you will 100% build muscle. Don't try and get all this protein into one meal. Spread it evenly through three, four, even five servings per day. And shakes can be a great option for this, but often people have a bad diet and then just add a protein shake in and think that's gonna make them stronger. A protein shake is 20 grams of protein, maybe 40 grams if it's a really big one. If you need 200 grams of protein in a day, that's still 160 grams left to get in. You can't just rely on protein shakes. They're a tool, they're not the answer. But if you eat three to four good meals a day, you're probably gonna get your protein in. And you're probably wondering about calories as well. So the final thing is to build muscle, we do wanna be in an energy surplus. So bringing in more calories than we're putting out. But in 99% of cases, if you're hitting your protein targets, you're probably gonna be in a calorie surplus anyway. But track it for a week or two, understand what you're actually eating, know what you should be eating, and just try to match them up. And if you need more help nutrition-wise, just let me know. And that's it. This is probably a little bit longer than our normal videos and it's less exercise heavy because the final thing you're probably wondering is what are the best exercises for muscle growth? And if you're still asking that after watching this video, go back and rewatch it and actually listen to what I've said. Muscle growth happens from either muscle damage, mechanical tension or metabolic stress plus protein coming in to repair that damage. If you think a particular exercise with a fancy name is gonna mean that your brain thinks I'm gonna create more muscle damage. You've probably got it a little bit back to front. We need to understand what creates muscle growth, mechanical tension, muscle damage, metabolic stress, muscle protein synthesis. We then need to understand what our goal is, bowl faster, hit the ball harder, be a better athlete. We then need to create a gym program that matches that with that. Now, that can be pretty complicated, but luckily for you, that's what we specialize in. So if you're fed up of going to the gym and hoping you make progress, hit the link in this video description and it'll take you to our program selection that we offer, which have helped hundreds of cricketers from all around the world 
just like you to improve their game and build muscle. And if you found that helpful, then next up, up here, you can watch our guide to off-season training. And I want you to figure out which mechanism of muscle growth we're prioritizing in each phase.